my name is anand um, i've been making games for a long long time now and i've been in the entertainment industry uh, for even longer than that and i've picked up a lot of stuff uh, over the uh, years that and i'm still here and uh, uh, rahul was kind enough to uh, say absurd things at my introduction and invite me uh, to the talk so um which means i survived right um i'm still here and i've picked up some stuff along the way which hopefully i'll be able to uh, share with you guys so that you guys at least make new fuck ups and do this don't do the same shit that i did so how did i survive how did i survive for so long smart career decisions guided by data some growth hacks and i never gave up on my dreams which is bullshit all right that's bullshit there's a lot of stuff so when we get advice on you know how to survive the games industry how to be successful how to make your studio grow how to make a hit game everybody tells us techniques and hacks you know here's a hack here's how you uh, you know do in app purchases here's how you uh, create a retention feature here's how you make fun um here's how you should set up a studio here's how you should hire people this should be your business model there's a lot of advice like that that is often given but there's too little of some of the really really important stuff which i want to kind of go into over the next half hour so what is it that you know what is it that they're not telling us what is it what are those things that we are expected to pick up on our own without advice or without explicit uh, guidance or mentorship and we also need to ask why survive what do you survive what do you normally survive sorry trauma right you survive an accident you survive cancer the games industry isn't a cancer it really isn't it could get there but it isn't right so it's not about surviving uh, if if you perceive the industry as something that you need to survive then there's a problem with that mental model and there's a problem with that perception and we need to make sure that we're perceiving it as something worth being in not as something that you need to survive you need to think i'm happy to be here not oh my god i need to survive this we need to switch that mental model in the first place right so what's really important is changing certain mindsets only then will the techniques all the growth hacks and all the stuff that you learn will only work if you have the right mindset to absorb it and apply it in the first place otherwise it will just come in and it will bounce off because you're not in the right frame of mind to be able to uh, make any use out of those things so hopefully i'll just give you some of the things that i've learned from my experience this is not some sort of gospel it's not some kind of prescriptive uh, approach which is going to like work for like all of you sitting in this room but i can share stuff that's worked for me and i can share examples of how it worked for me and hopefully you guys will be able to uh, pick up something from that yeah point number 1 it's really important you need to embrace the idea of positivity and i i want to dwell a little bit on what that means right how many of us in this room have like you know the minute you make a pitch or you say something or you uh, pitch an idea or uh, or you say that hey we should do things this way how many of you faced yeah but that won't work bef- because we tried it before here are the problems with that approach i think i've done it to you <laughs> this so it be being negative and like finding out what's wrong with something is actually the easiest way for you to seem, feel smart and that's why people do it it's just a very very easy way to like say hey i'm smart because i figured out why this won't work and that's fine maybe those things are valid points but you need to get out of the habit of thinking that way because it will prevent you from coming up with anything new and if you want to survive the games industry you need to be able to come up with solutions not criticize solutions right to be able to do that you need to start looking at certain things in terms of positivity and i'll try and give you some specific things of things we've implemented uh, when we were at hike messenger um, uh, when i was at hike messenger and we had a team and then i was at byju's and we had a team there we we actually implemented a whole bunch of simple practices which worked gangbusters it actually transformed the productivity of the team and it transformed the quality of the work we did and the speed at which we did it because there was no negativity slowing us down right and if you're going to do shit work might as well do it faster guys okay you need a positive view of people of games and of the world around you what i mean by positive is like the fundamental assumption is that people are not out to get you 
people are not slackers nobody comes and joins an organization with the intent to fail or to perform badly they don't everyone comes there with the intent to succeed and to contribute now along the line stuff happens and then people get into kind of negative loops and they get you know upset about stuff but nobody has very few people and i would say nobody starts off with the wrong intent so if you start perceiving people as positively and say that hey they have problems i have problems these they but they fundamentally trying to do the right thing working with people becomes a lot easier because you start believing stuff that they tell you you stop second guessing and third guessing everything they say we've all been in those loops right those things are barriers to communication and unless you're some sort of so- solo artist sitting and siloing somewhere you're going to work with people most of you are going to have to work with people and to work with people if you don't like people it's going to be difficult to work with people so switch that view and trust people you know screw you over then you can be careful but don't go in with the assumption that they're going to screw you over because that's really really harmful and it it it's a huge barrier to communication we need to positively view games like every like so one of the things we do whenever we play any game is hey what's cool about this not immediately man this sucks i could have done it better and i've seen a lot of uh, uh, especially with game developers i feel i've been that guy right uh, where we we play a game and we like i mean why did they do that 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 sucks i could have done that better but that is again an unhealthy way to look at anything at all try and take away there might be something in that game which works at least it's free i don't know right but there's stuff um, which you start perceiving games positively you put put yourself in a positive mindset and try to see what's good in a game or in a movie or in any experience you will benefit from taking away more things to inform you're not rejecting ideas you're absorbing ideas and those are the ideas that go sit inside your brain and then inform your consciousness when you're trying to create or come up with a solution those are the ingredients when an idea comes all of you have had an idea at some point right boom some idea where does it come from where does it come from you don't arrive at it through logic right it just suddenly pops into your head the reason it pops into your head is because your subconscious has stored a bunch of experiences inside and there's something going on which we really don't understand right we call it the muse we call it inspiration we call it flashes we really don't know really well what's going on but the subconscious tends to pop out something when you need it unless it has something to work with it can't pop that brilliant idea out and how do you get more ingredients to work with you absorb it so you need to be positive to the experiences around you positive communication super important we have a simple rule a simple rule on all the teams that i work with any communication if somebody says presents an idea somebody tells you something someone's like trying to contribute someone's making a suggestion you need to say three good things about it and specific things no like yeah that's a great idea but not allowed you need to say specific things about it uh before you can express what you think is wrong with it right for instance if somebody comes and gives me like let's say we're making a i don't know like a word game and somebody says we got to put 3d zombies in it i don't know you have to work hard enough to be able to see the positives you have to say i would say something like i really think 3d zombies could you know what normally the instinct will be are you crazy why would you put 3d zombies in a word game it makes no sense players are not going to like that 99 out of 100 people are going to say that but the way i would respond to it and i heartily recommend you do it's a simple exercise you just put down this rule and work hard at it you'll get good at it i would say let's find three things positive to say about it this right i'd say you know um yeah zombies in 3d rendered cutely could attract some attention and make it stand out from other word games no other word game has 3d zombies so maybe we could do something like that i appreciate the way you've come and given me such a risky idea i think that's very 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 valuable i think this is so crazy it might actually work then you flip your complaints into positive language instead of saying our players will never like zombies can you find a way to make zombies relevant in a word game now you've given people a problem to solve rather than you telling them why their idea won't work and the reason that we do this is not because i want to put zombies into a, a word game that's not the point the point is not to accept any idea that comes the point is to train yourself to think positive and people will respond to you positively because if if i come if you come and tell me some idea and suggestion and i immediately knock it down next time you have an idea you won't tell me you just won't 
all of us have been in that position right sometimes you just be like i'm not going to say anything because anyway they're not going to listen to me the reason that happens is because somebody would have knocked you down and you would have just been like okay fine i'm not going to say it and that idea which you didn't say might be the one that actually makes a billion dollars i don't care about false positives but one false negative can like is a huge loss so you need to think positive and communicate positive to create a culture of positivity so that ideas don't get killed it's okay to have stupid ideas no big loss so what so what if i gave you an idea and that was stupid and it didn't work what did we lose 5 minutes discussing it big deal but you need to have a culture of positivity if you want to have an organization that is productive works fast takes decisions with confidence teams work together well there's no communication friction which slows down stuff sometimes if you don't like somebody you'll take a day just to respond to their email because you don't like that person or you're not you're not comfortable with that person it happens all the time and imagine the amount of loss like uh, that happens uh, in terms of time when like in an organization of 50 people it's crazy right and positive design use positive language use positive design um what i mean by positive is rather than something that's restrictive or negative like one of the things i find a uh, very uh, common again an example is too often i see just too often and i blame a lot of us for this because we built those bad habits and i'm paying my dues now but here's a game then you will start with the assumption that your player is not going to like it and then you start bandaging how do we make a d30 retention feature let's give daily bonus let's give collections that'll hook him macha your game sucks no people don't want to play your game but you want to come up with a 101 like random ass hooks to say why you should play a sucky game nobody wants to play a sucky game use positive design use a design to make your so i'll tell you how this is negative versus positive negative is how can i get people to prevent how can i prevent people from leaving my game is negative why would people want to play my game how can i get them to enjoy my game is positive and it's a very 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 critical mindset shift i'm uh, i'm apologies if i'm very design focused because i'm a designer and i tend to think like a designer but i'm sure that there are similar examples in other disciplines as well yeah so positivity super important this is one of my favorites and people have been talking about this uh, for a while and in, in this track i don't know how many of you have been in the room consistently for the uh, last couple of talks but you need to have an inclusive view inclusivity is super important and i'll tell you why if you want to again survive the games business you need to have a wider play field you need to have more opportunity you need to have more space more of a market to play in right and then everyone's not fighting for the same resources but if everyone has a narrow and exclusive view of their players of what a workplace should be or what what a game should be then everyone's fighting for that same one piece of the pie but there might be opportunities lying out there which you're not seeing or recognizing because you're not open or inclusive and i'll explain what that means like inclusive view of games so many times especially with women uh, many times when i interview interview uh, designers who are women no i don't really play too many games i only played mario and contra i'm like <laughs> those are like hard games right but somehow there's an exclusive view that we've just kind of unless you're male and you've played like i don't know fifa or, or, or lol or something like that there's a very very exclusive view of what game players should be and what games are i mean how can you say i don't play games i play solitaire for 8 hours a day it's a game that exclusive view is killing us it's killing you it's killing me we need to be more open like i had a, a conversation with a, a couple of my friends uh, and they were like i'm not as hardcore as you are that's what she told me a couple of them in fact two or three uh, of my friends and i'm like what do you mean and like what are the last five games you finished undertale breath of the wild wonder song west of loathing and uh, bayonetta you know what games i finished in that same period none none i played two hours of divinity original sin two and like one hour of breath of the wild and like some fi- cool fighting games on my mobile phone but why is that exclusive with that now you are actually cutting out people who can come and contribute women people who play casual games people who play only mobile games people who play only card games we're cutting them out because for some reason we think this is some sort of a club which we need to protect by being exclusive and saying oh this is my domain guys this is if you you can do that but you're not going to survive you will survive 
if one thing happens you get dumb luck nobody can control that nobody can control that if you want to maximize your chances of success and thriving and being in a healthy space in the business you need to be open to people to games to things around you to ideas right i'll give you an example like at byju's uh, i was uh, working with my uh, old mate ranjit radhakrishnan and we had just looked at like the first 10 people in the team were like all men and we were like guys we're building a product for kids we're not building a product for 30 year old 40 year old men where are the women where are the other people where where's the diversity so we actively made an effort to hire more women and that worked gangbusters for us it worked like a dream and i'm not coming at it from some sort of an idealistic base which is a separate discussion but it just makes pure practical sense it is forget makes practical sense the other thing doesn't make any sense it makes no sense to be exclusive because you're killing your team you're it's like cutting off an arm and saying that i'm going to like knit right it makes no sense but yet we continue to do this because of some ego fuck ups i don't know man but we really 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 need to change right so we need to be inclusive you need to have an in- inclusive world view we did a couple more things i i was there in a bunch of talks here right and it's really important i insist on this on all my teams those who worked with me know this it started at zinga at zinga we used to in zinga india we used to be like always when the player comes he will click on this and he will click on that and then we should tell him to do this 70% of our players were women why the fuck are we saying he so we insisted that we say she at zinga and i transferred that culture to hike i transferred that culture to buy jews and we freely interchange he she when we talk about a player or a designer oh when i hire a designer i want him to have played games why him think about it and these are automatic behaviors i'm not saying people are do your i'm not saying people are doing this maliciously but it is harmful nevertheless it is harmful nevertheless we need to change all right so inclusive and open you'll survive none of us are entitled to shit nobody is entitled to anything nobody you don't deserve for me to celebrate your game idea and give you money to make it you don't deserve it you owe it to yourself not to give up but i don't owe it to you the universe doesn't owe it to you success takes time guys you can have overnight success for sure but it might take 15 years who am i paraphrasing greg norman jack nicklaus can't remember golf player so it took me 17 years to become an overnight success right it takes time if again if you're lucky see we keep discounting the role played by random chance and luck but if you are some of your game designers and developers if you just do the math the number of variables acting on something is so in, it's mind bogglingly large that you can't possibly discount the uh, role of random chance yet if somebody is successful we'll say we should do exactly what he did or she did right because that's what she did she became successful so i'm going to do the same thing you're looking at survivorship bias right you didn't look you're not looking at the 100 people who tried the same thing and failed because those stories don't get written it's survivorship bias it's a common cognitive bias so luck might help you but in the absence of luck what can you control just be patient put in the work build your networks build your skills ask your questions grow put in the work just put in the work at one point i was reading i think five books simultaneously uh, i was reading uh, a translation of the bhagavad gita i was reading uh, some poetry by rumi for some reason in comic book form which was great i was reading a uh, bunch of books some of them were fiction some of them all of them oddly enough boiled down to the same message shut the fuck up do your work results will take care of itself right just do your work do honest sincere work do smart work do the growth hacks do the business practices look at the data do all of it without a sense of entitlement and then you ask i did all of this where's my cookie that's the, that's the problem i have right that's the problem i have with the messaging saying follow your dreams and success will come not necessarily you could get success without following your dreams you could follow your dreams and not get success depending on how you define success if you let other people define success for you then might be you'll never get it if you define it for yourself if i define my success as angelo lobo is going to be sitting in the first row second row in my talk then i'm I've, i'm there i've made it so just put in the work be patient 
and don't focus on the results and you will appreciate then if you mixed with positivity if you have a positive view and an open view you will be able to celebrate the successes that you do have already so one of the things that i kind of say one of the exercises that you can do is start don't resent other people for their success it's again something that i've seen it's a very toxic thing that happens in the uh, in the games business which is all i know when someone else does something good and it succeeds ah he just got lucky i had the same idea 4 years ago how many times have we heard this i had the same idea that guy made my idea he became success it's okay don't resent other people for success be generous and it's an it's an easy enough thing you can train yourself to do this you can just you when you see see the impulse recognize it and fake it just say i appreciate that woman for her success and i'm not going to resent her just fake it and you'll see automatically it become a habit you'll start doing it and you your life will be immeasurably more chill that much i can tell you super important how many of you have read jesse shell's book i have very bad vision hands up in the air how many of you have read jesse shell's book okay you should the art of game design uh, uh, a book of lenses it's a, it's, a, it's an essential book for game designers and anyone interested in working in games in the first chapter he ends it with the most important skill for a game designer is listening it's not math it's not art it's not complicated systems it's not balancing it's not spreadsheeting it's listening because if you're not listening then you're barreling down some sort of rat hole which you don't know where it's headed right if you're a designer and if you want success commercial success if you're like i'm going to make anything i want and then you know i'm just going to put it out there then more power to you but i'm talking to people like who are conventionally looking for what is conventionally de- defined as you want people to play your game you want people to pay for your game you want people to like your game then listen listen to the players listen to your teammates listen to your investors listen listening doesn't mean you have to take every feedback that's given to you that's not it but you need to listen and there's a simple exercise that we do in again in teams that we work in which will um, you know kind of how many of you watched uh, the live action live action listen to me lion king it wasn't live action watch the lion king right so um if somebody came and told you hey man i watched the, the lion king i really hated it what would you say typically which one any one jeez really your reflex will be yeah i i also hated it or you'll say no man i liked it do you realize what you're doing you're immediately removing the frame to yourself that person is telling you they didn't like the movie instead of listening you're immediately saying what you thought about it it's a very easy thing to check and change it's a practical just try it check that impulse man i have a back problem yeah even i had a back problem once you're trying to empathize but subconsciously you're making it about you don't do that don't do that stay with the person because when you come and tell me something and i do that you're going to get pissed off so don't do that to others right it's very very simple i don't know they've said it and was it jesus i don't know who said that do unto others as you would have them do unto you was that jesus thank you it's a very simple thing this wisdom in that there's a lot of wisdom in that treat people the way you want to be treated you don't like people who don't listen to you and who are not empathetic to you then why would you behave like that with someone else so empathy is like a critically important i mean now it's no longer a secret guys right modern uh, design and uh, is all about starting from a place of empathy so start recognizing what empathy is you know all of you are empathetic how many of you and honest answers guys honest answers how many of you cry at the movies there you go why do you cry you know it's a goddamn movie you know that those are actors you already know this when you buy a ticket and you go in there you know that it's fake i know that it's all fake but i cried when the undertaker retired right yeah 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 i hear you guys why do we do that because we are wired for empathy when you see someone laughing you feel happy when you see someone crying you feel sad you you are built for empathy as we're fundamentally wired for it so lean into that don't fight it be empathetic to your coworkers to your investors to your players now that doesn't mean that you have to kind of subsume your own individuality and you have to only go by what other people say that's not what i'm saying but listen pay attention at least you know what stress that person is having right you know what anxiety why is that person being that way then you don't have to agree with it but at least you'll be at a place of understanding super important 
if you are going to be falling sick all the time you're going to be mentally unwell you're not going to get shit done guys no one's going to get shit done you got to take care of yourself and you got to take care of your teammates you got to take care of those around you one of my favorite zen sayings is that you cannot pour from an empty cup unless you are well you cannot give so just stop i see too many like toxic cultures saying that work is the most important thing man look i was at byju's i'm not going to work overnight so that byju can buy another ferrari i'm done with that i'm done with that if for myself i'll work that's okay it's still better but don't let people make you prioritize work which they give you over your own well being do not do that stop right now we need to build cultures that are healthy we need to build cultures that people want to work in it's think of it we are game developers right you don't want to make a game we made that mistake at zynga where we were getting people addicted and hooked and when they stopped playing a zynga game at in the worst days of zynga we improved a lot after that learning the hard way but at peak time of that free to play mania on the gravy train we when a zynga player would stop playing a zynga game they would be like thank god i stopped never again that's not enjoyment that's addiction when i finish a cd project game like the witcher or yeah respect love but i'm like i can't wait for the next one i'm never going to say never again right so if products need to be built like that cultures need to be built like that too we don't want to make an organization that, or a team that is makes it impossible for people to leave because they are hooked or handcuffed in some way we need to make it an inclusive and a healthy culture where people want to be because it makes them feel good and they enjoy it and they feel fulfilled spend time with yourself spend time with your teammates recognize that for instance we did a bunch of things uh, we we tried our best and and the new organization that we're building we're hoping to build that culture where for instance why is mental health not treated on par with physical uh, illness if i have asthma if i have asthma no manager has told me shake it off nobody has told me this they're like oh anand you have asthma too bad take it easy it's all right but if somebody comes and says i'm having a anxiety bout what anxiety ha ah, it's all in your head yeah of course it's all it's like saying asthma that's all in your lungs yeah it's fucking in my lungs of course it's in my lungs anxiety is in my head i fucking know that but that doesn't mean it's invalid we need to treat mental health on par with physical health why do when women get their periods why are they not given time off why give me a anybody has a reason for that i'd like to hear it nobody really if nobody has a reason for it why the fuck is it there but guys we really really need to take care of ourselves and build a healthy culture where everyone feels comfortable and you don't feel like you need to be like someone else just to fit in that is not okay so the tip i i just put these tips in there because rahul said that yeah, i want some practical stuff there i want takeaways i want actionable stuff i don't want you to come and rant on some ideological stuff so hey if this one's for you man the next time you need to kill yourself for some deadline someone has imposed on you skip it don't do it we'll see what happens i'm not joking i i've done it all of these things are things i've practiced and people on my teams have practiced looming deadline tomorrow somebody is really really unwell somebody's got a sick parent somebody's got a child that needs taking care of somebody needs a dog that needs taking care of it's okay we'll find a way it's not important you can't make it like again you need to have maturity right you can't make it can't be a habit but neither can killing yourself become a habit very easily we let that become a habit there is no cookie for that guys there's no cookie nobody gives a shit you know what nobody will even remember except your dog or that kid who you didn't show up for they'll remember your boss is not going to fucking remember your player is not going to remember nobody cares so you take care of yourself take care of people around you that's it questions